Hello, everyone. God bless you. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to The Good Book Project. Here at this channel, in our chronological Bible in a Year video podcast, to the glory of our Lord, we have reached day 353. Today is Tuesday, December the 19th, in the year of our Lord, 2023. Yesterday, for day 352, we read Paul's first letter to his spiritual son, Timothy where he teaches about all things involving the transformative word of the gospel of Jesus Christ and how one should live while spreading out the gospel. He teaches about what to share with the elders of the church, how to set up church, worship, and doctrinal matters. We also read of how one should live in their heart and Timothy being exhorted by Paul to live and show other people of the true gospel. And for today, day 353, we continue on with Paul's letters as he is writing them when he is imprisoned in Rome. Now to another faithful servant of the Lord, Titus. I'll pray us into the word for today, and we will get right into it. Lord, we come before your throne today in the mighty name of Jesus, and we just thank you because in your provision and your goodness over our lives, which we have seen every single day this year, you've given us just one more day to go through your word. You've given us the breath of life. And we and the ability to open up our eyes this morning. We thank you because that's a blessing in and of itself. And thank you that every single day we can freely read your word and not only read your word, but get your word out there to other people. As we continue on in the book of now Titus today, we ask that you show us everything you want us to see. Let us hear everything we need to hear. And let us be able to commit this book to our hearts. We ask for all of these things in the powerful name of Jesus, and we all say, Amen. For today, day 353, we now read another letter that Paul writes to one of the faithful servants of the Lord, Titus. And we're going to do this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Word of God reads, Paul's letter to Titus, Titus 1. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's chosen ones, and the knowledge of the truth, which is according to godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God, who can't lie, promised before time began. But in his own time revealed his word in the message, with which I was entrusted according to the commandment of God our Savior, to Titus, my true child according to a common faith. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. I left you in Crete for this reason, that you would set in order the things that were lacking and appoint elders in every city as I directed you. If anyone is blameless and the, hus the husband of one wife, having children who believe, who are not accused of loose or unruly behavior, for the overseer must be blameless as God's steward, not self-pleasing, not easily angered, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for dishonest gain, but given to hospitality, a lover of good, sober-minded, fair, holy, self-controlled, holding to the faithful word, which is according to the teaching, that he may be able to exhort in this sound doctrine and to convict those who contradict him. For there are also many unruly men vain talkers and deceivers, especially those of the, uns of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, men who overthrow whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for dishonest, gains, for dishonest gains' sake. One of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, and idle gluttons. This testimony is true. For this cause... Reprove them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not paying attention to Jewish fables and commandments of men who turn away from the truth. To the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But both their mind and their conscience are defiled. They profess that they know God, but by their deeds they deny Him. Being abominable, disobedient and unfit for any good work. Titus 2 But say the things which 
fit sound doctrine, that older men should be temperate, sensible, sober-minded, sound in faith, in love, and in perseverance, and that older women likewise be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, nor enslaved to much wine, teachers of that which is good, that they may train the young wives to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sober-minded, chaste, workers at home, kind, being in subjection to their own husbands, that God's word may not be blasphemed. Likewise, exhort the younger men to be sober-minded. In all things show yourself an example of good works. In your teaching, show integrity, seriousness, incorruptibility, and soundness of speech that can't be condemned, that he who oppresses you may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say about us. Exhort servants to be in subjection to their own masters and to be well-pleasing in all things, not contradicting, not stealing, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to the intent that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we would live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age looking for the blessed hope and appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good works. Say these things and exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one despise you. Titus 3. Remind them to be in subjection to rulers and to authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, not to be contentious, to be gentle, showing all humility towards all men. For we were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness of God our Savior and His love towards mankind appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we did ourselves, but according to His mercy, He saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Spirit, whom He poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by His grace, we might be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This saying is faithful. And concerning these things I desire that you insist confidently, so that those who have believed God may be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. But shun foolish questionings, genealogies, strife, and disputes about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. Avoid a facious man, according after a first and second warning, knowing that such a one is perverted and sinful, being self-condemned. When I send Artemis to you, or Tychicus, be diligent to come to me, to Nicopolis. Nicopolis, for I have determined to winter there. Send Zenas the lawyer, and Apollos on their journey speedily, that nothing may be lacking for them. Let our people also learn to maintain good works to meet necessary needs, that they may not be unfruitful. All who are with me greet you. Greet those who love us in love. Grace be with you all. Amen. And thank you, God, for your holy word. So Titus, who was mentioned in a plethora of the books of the Bible that we've read already, those being books like Galatians, Acts and 2 Corinthians, we read now Paul's letter to Titus also to be teaching about what Titus is when he is sending out to the place where he was sent to go build up the church with the elders and all. So Paul is teaching Christian conduct, church conduct, who is in position for what, and much more about the faithful and how to live their lives. So we see here, both in 1 Timothy and also in Titus, about Paul teaching about a faithful life 
in Jesus Christ, a faithful life to the church, how the church is to be set up, and much more. And I pray because we read this book in one day that you take your time at least once to read this book again and make bullet points as you study to see all of the different points that Paul is teaching to the church and also what God teaches through the Apostle Paul to us now. And with that, day 353 is complete, and I'm so happy you were able to make it out today to hear the Word of God. I will pray us out of the Word for today, and we will go throughout the rest of our day. God in heaven, we come before your throne today in the name of Jesus, your only begotten Son, and we just thank you, Lord, because you are a good God and a good Father. Lord, in your endless mercy, in your endless grace over our lives, You've given us your holy word that we can continually learn every single day that we open it up. Lord, thank you for Paul's letter to Titus and how it still teaches us today how to be faithful in the church, how to be faithful Christians. Lord, help us as we study to commit this book to our hearts and to put this book into practice on how we should conduct our lives, a life in you, a life in Jesus Christ, a life in the Holy Spirit. And we just thank you because there's no guessing. You've given us your perfect word. Lord, as we go throughout the rest of today, we dedicate this day to you and ask you to bless it abundantly and help us be a blessing to anyone who is ready to hear your gospel. Help us that in everything that we do, we are a reflection of you, the one true God, and that at all times we are ready to share the gospel, the life-changing gospel, with someone. We ask for all these things in the powerful name of Jesus, and we all say, Amen. Day 354 is tomorrow, and I can't wait for you to return for it. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance toward you and give you peace. Peace.